Good day, everyone. Welcome to FCC Freedom in Christ Church Prayer Retreat. Thank you for once again giving me the opportunity to share to you a couple of thoughts on prayer and with different prayer focus. And so this message is going to be uh, broken down into four parts. The first is use me. The second is search me. Third is break me. And the fourth prayer is send me. May our time together be a blessed time as God is present with us in this gathering. Use me. Have you ever felt that, that you wanted to do something productive to make an impact in the world that we live in? Do you ever feel that there is a purpose for you in this world? Well, you and I have a purpose, and these desires and thoughts are healthy, actually, and they're worthwhile. We all want to be used by God in one way or another. It is when we are being used by God and fulfilling His purpose, we experience His joy and satisfaction in life, and God is glorified in the process. And just like when a mobile phone or a frying pan or a hammer is used for its designated purpose, it is effective and it accomplishes what we intend it to be used for, like to call, to cook, or to drive a nail. I hope I got that in the right order. And so we want to ask God the question, and may it, may it be a prayer, a personal prayer to God. Lord, use me. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus? This is a humble request that each one should pray. Perhaps it's a prayer that comes from the realization that we have been doing things apart from God, doing our own thing, which is futile and useless. So use me is a prayer, a plea, admitting that without God, we are nothing, and we are being willing to open to His leading. Now, there's a beautiful passage in Psalm 143 where the writer David just pours out his heart to God. You will notice from the context of chapter 143 that David is not free from the difficulties of life. While we are struggling or while he is struggling, almost fainting, yet he asks God to deliver him. In the midst of his hardship, in the passage, we see David expresses his faith in God. In verse 8, he declares to God, For you, for in you, I trust. If we want to be used by God, it begin, begins with trust. Trusting that His ways are best. That He is sovereign and that He loves us. Continuing on in the verse, he adds, Make me know or show me the way I should go. And then in verse 10, he prays, teach me to do your will. So in spite of all his troubles, David asked God to use him. And so when we pray that prayer, use me, Lord, that necessitates our also asking God to show us and to reveal his will and his way. And what is amazing here is that God has not yet delivered David. His problems are still not yet solved, and yet, he wants to know God's direction for him because he wants to be used by God. We too don't have to wait until all our troubles are over. While we are still in our personal storms, we can pray, Use me, dear Lord. David desires to know God and to do his will. David knows that it's only in following the will of God will he experience joy and fulfillment in life. In verse 10, Notice here that David deeply wants for the Spirit of God to lead him to level ground. Verse 10b. And what does it mean to lead to level ground? The psalmist here uses an imagery of a pathway. Level ground is desirable for those that are trodding life's road and earnestly desirous of following Jesus. The Bible, such as in the Message Translation, often talks about and uses the phrase, the straight and narrow way. So God's way and His will is the steady, the straight, and the easier way than the rocky, thorny paths of the world. Once we allow the Holy Spirit to fill our lives and to control us, it is the Spirit who is in us will lead us and will guide us to the level ground, the place where there is righteousness, 
where there's obedience and stability in life. And that's what we want. Amen? The prayer, use me, is loaded with meaning. It means being humble, trusting, and faithfully obeying what God is leading us to do. Uh, at times, it may not be the grand, the magnificent, the miraculous task that God is calling us to do, like gathering a crowd of 1,000 for an evangelistic crusade or in performing miraculous healing of a cripple. Now, it can, but perhaps it may involve just a simple act of faith and obedience to God by showing kindness to a stranger or forgiving an offending neighbor or friend in the secrecy, in a secrecy or in silence. So use me as a prayer that we need to regularly ask of God because He can work out His divine will in us and through us every day as we submit ourselves to Him. Let us be sensitive to that still small voice of the Master and let us be aware what God wants us to do. And once we know it, let us do it. Let that prayer, use me, be the expression of our heart's desire to be an instrument in the hands of God, ready to serve others according to the divine guidance of God. May we all seek the greater purpose, that divine eternal purpose that is beyond our personal desires. There's this song by Chris, Chris Tomlin entitled, I Will Follow You, and you may be familiar with it. And part of the lyrics goes, and may this song be our sincere prayer to God. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. Higher than my sight, higher above my life, I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. And where you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If in this life I lose, I will follow you. I will follow you. Amen. For the action point and reflection, can we pray this prayer from our heart? Lord, use me. Use me, dear Lord. Then after spending time in prayer, why don't we write down three practical things that we can do for God to use us, whether it be a big or a small thing for His glory.